teach. All right, so we'll be talking about probability. It says that you spun one of these spinners 10 times. The results were four, four, three, one, four, two, four, one, three, one. Which of these two spinners did you use? Justify why. Okay, think about it. Have a look at the spinners. Those were the results. So we're talking about multi-stage events here and what we have would be independent events and dependent events. Or if I would have a um, deck of cards, if I shuffle it, the reason why you shuffle so that the, the card that you get or take from the top would be um, random, right? So they would have equal chances of being picked. So if I pick the top one and if I get a club right quite lucky what would be so the chance of me getting a club would be one out of four right or it could be what 13 out of 52 because there would be 13 numbers for each suite a uh, suit right so if i would be getting a club on the first draw and if i place that and not put it back into the deck, then my probability of getting the next one um, to be a club would change. It would be lower, right? Because then I would now have just 12 out of 52 instead of the original, which was 13 out of 52. Um, those are the things that we talked about last year about um, multi-stage events, um, if they are dependent or independent, okay? Now, moving on to our warm-up task here, why, why did we talk about dependent and independent? So when you spin um, that spinner, the first one that you spin uh, and the second one wouldn't be dependent on the first one. And the same thing on the third one, it wouldn't be dependent from um, the previous ones. So each time you spin it, the probability would be the same, right? Um, the same thing when you toss a coin, even if I toss it 100 times and for the 100 times, out of that 100 times, I got, what, 99 times a tail. It doesn't mean that the 100th time, it could be a head, could be a tail as well. So each time would be a half every single time. Those are what you call your independent events, all right? Each event would be um, independent of the result from the previous one, okay? So the same thing with this one. These spinners are spun 10 times and each spin would be independent of each other, okay? So looking at all those divisions, um, well, why would the divisions be different? And what does that tell you about the probability of um, each of those numbers? Anybody? For the first spinner, which one had a greater probability? Is it one, two, three, or four? It would be four, right? Um, how about for the second spinner? Which one would have a greater probability? Or would there be two of them which would have the same probability? Two and three, right? So the, the area for that sector, all right, would determine <laughs> the probability of that number. So it's the left one. So uh, when we talk about probability, um, we talked about the uh, range of probability. Um, in year nine, we talked about how um, the set notation would be written, right? So again, it's with a curly bracket. Um, so that's sample space. So the same thing with this um, spinners. If we would be writing down the sample space of um, the first spinner is actually the same as the second one, right? So you just literally list down all the possible elements. So if this is a set, then the members of that set would be what you call elements. So each of these elements, one, two, three, four, would be separated by a comma, all right? And then you've got your open bracket and your closed bracket, okay? 
Um, now, we've got two way tables here. I can't remember if we did this last year. Also, um, different diagrams that we talked about last year. We talked about the tree diagram, right? If this was drawn in a tree diagram, you could just imagine how long the tree diagram would look like. If, so when you have that rectangle, that is what you call your universal set, okay? And the symbol for your, you name each of these sets, okay? The symbol that you use for the universal sets is that weird looking E, right? And it's not the easiest um, letter to write as well. <laughs> okay, I don't know why they make it like harder for you guys to write them, but it wasn't me, just so you know, right? And then of course, when you have what a set, then you would use um, what circles, okay? And how you write or how you name that circle, that set would be right at the top and here. Anything that shaded here outside that A is what you call your complement of A, complement of A. The symbol for that is A dash. Apparently it's called A dash. I grew up saying that's A prime, okay? But that's A dash, or you could just say complement of A, A complement, that's also acceptable, okay? What it means is that it's anything outside of A. Okay, so for example, if your set A would be the numbers one, two, three, four, five, your A complement or your A dash or your A prime would be all the other numbers which are not one, two, three, four, or five. Okay, so if you could probably have here six, seven, eight, you could have even a half there right? Because all the numbers that you have there inside A would be just one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now, what do we need um, with complementary events? When you say complementary events, um, if you've got the probability of A and you add that to the probability of A prime, um, it would always be equal to one, okay? Just like if you probably have the probability of one, right? For you to roll a die, dice, okay? The probability of one plus the probability of not getting a one. What's the probability of getting a one? It's one out of six. What's the probability of you not getting one? It's five out of six because there are five remaining numbers, right? So it's five out of six. And if you add them together, you get six out of six, which is actually one. Okay, see ya. Bye. Okay. Come on, Rocky, let's go.